Why do progressives hate the Charter and the Constitution? I'm Brian Lilly with the Rebel.media. Now, we all know the Liberals and the NDP. They love the Charter, right? Well, they at least love the parts of the Charter that help push their agenda, meaning any section that's used for a court decision on something they couldn't get through Parliament. But their love of the Charter and the larger Constitution? It's very selective. I mean, they don't like Section 8. That's the part that reads, everyone has the right to be secure against unreasonable search or seizure. Now, how do I know they don't like that section? Because neither party has ever asked a question, not a single solitary question, about the kicking down of doors, the seizing of guns two years ago in High River. Not once, not even after the RCMP Public Complaints Commission issued a report describing the multitude of civil rights violations that occurred. But if the Charter can be used to make life easier for criminals, to legalize prostitution, or any of their pet projects, then they love it. But they do have a selective love for the Charter. But did you know that the Charter of Rights and Freedoms is just part of the, the larger constitution that governs Canada? And the rest of the constitution, as far as I can tell, they actually hate it. Why? Because a big part of the larger constitution is about limiting government power. It assigns jurisdiction to the federal and provincial governments. It stops Ottawa from being the central planner that the progressives currently running the NDP and the Liberals want the nation's capital to be. Which brings me to my latest complaint about progressives. I know, I've got a lot of them, but here's my latest. Why are they telling Canada's mayors of major cities and the voters of those major cities that they'll give them everything their hearts desire when the Constitution actually forbids it? If you don't believe me on this, well, look it up. Google Constitution of Canada. Look at the Division of Powers, Sections 91 and 92. Section 91 details federal powers such as the regulation of trade and commerce, unemployment insurance, the postal service, the census and statistics, militia, military and naval service, and defense. Those are some of the federal powers. Now, provincial powers include the establishment, maintenance, and management of public and reformatory prisons, um, for the province, the establishment, maintenance, and management of hospitals, asylums, charities, that includes municipal institutions in the province, and generally all manners of a merely local or private nature in the province. So cities and local issues, that's provincial jurisdiction. The feds can't actually do much of anything without the provinces giving their blessing. Now, the reason that we have a and need a division of powers is simple. It helps establish clear guidelines for who's responsible for what. So the provinces are responsible for cities and towns, the, for hospitals, for healthcare, the feds, they're responsible for the post office, for the army. I mean, can you imagine the provinces setting up their own armies or trying to establish their own divisions within the Canadian armed forces? That would be madness. Yet that's what we've got when the feds are trying to get involved in healthcare or municipal issues. Why, Why do they do this? Well, because politicians being politicians, they want power, they want to get credit, they want to be seen bringing home the pork. So it was really disturbing on the weekend to see Tom Mulcair and Justin Trudeau promising all kinds of goodies to Canada's cities if either of them forms government after the October election. Now, I actually think the Harper government does too much for cities. Now, how can I say that when so many Canadians live in cities? Because, well, why are the feds funding local infrastructure? If the feds are funding it, the province are funding it, the city's funding it. Well, who gets the credit if it goes well? Who gets the blame if it goes bad? It all muddies the water. Now, I say tax for what you're responsible for. Quit begging from other layers of government. But in today's Canada, progressives really want to bring back the Ottawa as central planner model. The one that will see a bureaucrat in Ottawa make decisions about roads and bridges in St. John's or Vancouver. And that doesn't make sense. Yet here we have Mulcair and Trudeau promising to help pay for Canada's cities to help manage their problems. From Mulcair's tweet, an NDP government will partner with municipalities to shorten commutes, fix roads and bridges, and build more affordable housing. And then you've got Justin Trudeau promising, quote, strategic investments in affordable housing, public transit and transportation, climate change and smart cities. Huh, you know what? Out of all of those things that both leaders promised, out of all of those, only one, is federal jurisdiction. Climate change. The rest is up to provincial and municipal governments, and believe me, if they want to, they have enough money to do these things. They can raise their own tax revenue rather than simply beg from Ottawa. 
But instead, it's all beg, beg, beg. And during question period Monday, that was a preoccupation of the opposition parties. Why won't the government give cities more money? Mr. Speaker, at the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Conference in Edmonton this weekend, the cities and towns across Canada were treated to a new version of the old classic Oliver Twist. On transit, urban leaders are pleading with this government, please, please, just a little more. Instead, what they got from the stage was a spin on the old classic. What they got was Oliver's Twisted. The finance minister barked to municipal leaders. He said, get real. Get real, cities. You can expect less from this government. Cities and towns are clear. They need infrastructure dollars, and they need them now, and they want them now. Instead, this government has orphaned Canadian municipalities. When does the transit money come, and why doesn't it come now, and when are you going to give us more? We heard the Minister of Finance this week. It's risky and reckless, he says, to invest any more in our cities. Well, we saw the evidence this morning of both liberal and conservative neglect of public transit in this country. Our largest city shut down by a subway system failure, leaving hundreds of thousands of commuters stranded. But we have a plan, Mr. Speaker, to get transit moving in towns and cities across this country. Will the Conservatives get on board with the NDP's practical plan for public transit? I'm not saying that infrastructure doesn't need to be built or that commutes and transit are not pressing issues. They are. But what I am saying is that there's a right way and a wrong way to tackle these issues. 148 years ago, the Fathers of Confederation saw the wisdom in the idea that a government close to the people would be best suited to make local decisions. Now, well, I live in Ottawa. Why should I or anyone else in the capital be making decisions about infrastructure projects in Toronto, Winnipeg, Vancouver, or Halifax? We need to get back to respecting the wisdom of the Constitution, respecting the divisions of powers, and not just celebrating the char parts of the Constitution or Charter that we like when it suits us.